Welcome to York. Have you got pockets for me? Some other thing, isn't it? I am strong and powerful. Why? Is it because I love myself less? That's one of the things that imposter syndrome does. <laughs> Welcome to York. This is my first time here in York. Um, I've come here for work for two nights, so this is Tuesday. Um, we have um, a leaders away day tomorrow, and then we have something else on Thursday morning, and then I go back on Thursday afternoon. This is my first time away in such a long time for work, especially the last time I went away for work was in 2019, and then the pandemic happened, and then I had maternity leave, and then I got back to work last year um june of last year actually almost a year now and a couple of days i just realized that and this is my first time away when levi is a lot more aware of things he's 25 26 months now he's never seen me go anywhere i'm pretty sure he doesn't even know that i work all he sees is me with him i drop him off in nursery i pick him up in nursery i do everything for him i told him with him all day all night so he doesn't really understand that i tried to prep him i tried to explain to him that i need to go away for two days he won't see me at home tonight or tomorrow morning for another two days he seemed to listen to me but i don't think he really understood i think he went way above his head he'll probably realize that when he doesn't see me at home tonight or tomorrow and this is the first time Lakshman and Levi are on their own without me. It's not that Lakshman is not capable of it. He's very well capable, but he's just not done it by himself. He's traveled a lot while I had Levi on my own many, many, many times. So I prepped everything for them at home, as in um, I stocked up the fridge, got their food ready, got fruits ready for them, did all of the laundry so they have clothes and everything. It's only two days when I told Lakshman I have everything ready for him. He was like, it's only two days. You're not going away for ages. I can take care of things as well. Don't worry. But I got things sorted for them so that it's easier for him because he needs to drop me if I go to work and then come back, pick him up and then have dinner and have everything. But I thought it would just be easier for him. I'm staying in Travel Lodge. It's right in the heart of the city. And it is quite noisy at the moment because it's five o'clock now. But I'm hoping it's not going to be as noisy tonight. I want to go out for a bit, um, have an early dinner, explore a little bit, maybe get something for even election as a souvenir because this is my first time here in New York and I heard that it's a really, really beautiful place. So I really want to go out and have a walk. Um, and it's sunny, it's super hot. I think it's somewhere 27, 28 degrees. I'm sweating really hot, can't take it. I don't think this room has icons. I'm probably gonna have to sleep with the window open tonight. Um, but I wanted to take you along on this trip because it feels like it's a new experience for me. Um, it's, I'm back to square one now really with the combination of the pandemic having a baby being away on maternity leave everything has taken a toll on me on my mental health on my own expectations of myself and you know how critical i am of myself i've always been extra critical on myself and i think it's gotten worse now but that's for another day i don't want to bore you with that now um but yeah i wanted to vlog this experience see how it is and i am sure it will be a good experience to look back on. I had so many doubts on whether I wanted to come or not. Lakshman pushed me, literally forced me to do it. And yeah. When you close your eyes, do you feel
anything to ride from the spray. Things that you need to start is good for a bit texture. Jelly's on the bottom, it looks like it's a bit of 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 a bit I was talking to my mother while I was walking back to the hotel after dinner and she asked me if it's a good hotel and she was telling me to lock the doors properly to be safe and to be careful. When will mothers ever treat their children like an adult. I don't know who will they ever trust us. Will they ever know that we will know how to take care of ourselves? It's a mother's thing, isn't it? I just had my hair bath, waiting for my hair to dry so I can get to bed. But I'm, I was going to watch a little bit of TV. But I just realized that, you know, real TV, whatever you call it here in the UK, is rubbish. I am so grateful that we don't have this at home. I don't know if I'm just spoiled watching Amazon Prime and Netflix and Disney Plus and, you know, things of that sort and YouTube <laughs> that we've hardly ever watched TV. In fact, I don't even remember the last time I saw something on TV. It's just nonsense. Literally, I tried looking for something to watch. Nothing is appealing. Hardly anything. So I'm just going to read a little bit and then hopefully hit the bed early tonight. Um, Lakshman called me a couple of times ever since he picked Levi up in the nursery. First time, it seems he asked for me when Lakshman went to pick him up because I'm the one who always picks him up. As soon as they got home, he thought I would be at home. I wasn't. He insisted on talking to me. And then he was playing with me. I said he was playing um, hide and seek with me on FaceTime. And then he wanted to play with water. He insisted that Lakshman calls me to ask my permission when Lakshman said no. And then he called when he was having his dinner. He called when he was having his bath before going to sleep. It was so sweet and I missed him so much. I don't know what to make out of this trip. I wanted to come and yet I didn't want to come. I don't know if that even makes sense. I want this because it's a very good opportunity for me for work, for career, everything. It's only been four or five months now since I joined this new team and it's an entirely new role. It's an entirely different role from what I did previously. So it has opened up a lot more opportunities for me and attending the Leaders Away Day is one of it. I wanted to come because it's good for me. I'll be able to see the rest of the leaders that I have been communicating also because all of these leaders are all over the place now with, you know, smart working and everything. Everyone is in different places. My team is not even in Bristol. I'm the only one in Bristol. Uh, the rest of my team are in York, and one of them is in Sheffield, and I'm the only one in Bristol. So tomorrow will be the first day that I see them. First of all, it's a good opportunity to meet the rest of my team face to face, and then it's a good opportunity to meet all of the other leaders that I have been communicating with over Teams, and emails and chats and those sort of things. You know, it's it's good good to build a rapport. It's called a way day. It's I think it's going to be like um like a team building thing. Okay, so that's one thing I thought it was good. But on the other side, I'm like, I'm so used to being at home. I'm used to being under my shell in my cocoon, not really meeting people face to face, you know, hiding behind teams, hiding behind screens and computers and stuff. Uh, and I got comfortable in that, which is not good, really not good at all, which is where my imposter syndrome comes in. And, you know, the inferiority and all of those things comes in. I love a good challenge. I always want to grow, want to progress, want to do something new, want to learn a lot more, um, gain a lot more skills and everything. I always want to do that. Therefore, I love challenges. I seek out challenges and I make challenges for myself. I create challenges and accept things for myself. But... The pandemic, having a baby, being away on maternity leave, changing role, being 
the new person in a team after a very long time. Combination of all of these things are kind of, kind of, I'm looking for the right word. I wouldn't say dampened my spirit, kind of made me a bit more timid than I would like to admit. That's right. That's what it is. It has made me a lot more timid than I would like to admit. And I love that I had this opportunity to get out of my comfort zone like I used to before. So because I was 50-50, I was torn. But Lakshman pushed me, literally insisted that I had to come, which I'm thankful for and I'm grateful for. But I have missed the two of them because I'm so used to being with them all the time, taking them out. It was a different kind of a freedom, being free, packing lights, going on a train myself, not dragging a two-year-old, not bargaining and negotiating with a two-year-old to get onto the train, to sit down, not to eat junk, to follow me. Come on, come on, come on. I didn't have to say any of those things. I just walked, went straight to the train, put my things down, sat down, enjoyed my view, enjoyed my reading time, my me time, you know. Even walking out of the city, it was it was a different thing. And yet, I still miss them. I wouldn't say it's a mom guilt. I think I've come beyond the mom guilt. And there is no necessity for any mom guilt at all. Uh, dads don't feel that. They don't feel guilty. They do miss their family, but they don't feel guilty for leaving their family to work. So I wouldn't say I feel guilty for leaving my family for work. But I do miss them because I'm so used to being with them all the time. Good morning. I am ready for the day. I'm wearing a dress from Uniqlo. It's a wraparound dress. Um, it's a true wraparound dress. Such a nice one. And it has pockets on both sides. I don't know what it is with Uniqlo. They are so good with their material. And they put pockets in everything. Dress and skirts. I've got so many clothes from Uniqlo now. Literally half my wardrobe is from them. Planning. This is day two in York. I didn't bother vlogging much at all yesterday because I went into work and then, you know, all of my colleagues are there, new people that I'm meeting, and it's a little bit awkward filming in front of them or explaining to them, so I didn't bother taking it out and also their privacy. But I had an amazing day yesterday. I wanted to sit down and talk to you. Before coming, I was initially very excited that I was invited to join this. It is a leader's away day. But drawing up closer to the day, I got a little bit worried. Not really worried. I was a bit concerned. I was thinking, what am I going to contribute? I'm not necessarily a people leader, but I do contribute to leaders. That's what my team does anyway. Um, and my team leader, my manager, wanted us to be in here because it would have been useful and it really was useful for all of us to be here. And when we started yesterday, it was really nice to put faces to names because we communicate with all of these people on Teams and, you know, video calls and everything, but not really face to face. So it was good to see people face to face and all of the team building activities and the group breakout sessions and discussions that we had was so good. Recently, I've realized that I've been struggling with imposter syndrome, not really struggling, but experiencing it. It's not super serious or anything. It doesn't really stop me from doing what I want to do, but it doesn't give me the peace of mind. It's always at the back of my mind thinking that I am uh, experiencing this and it's not true. That's one of the things about imposter syndrome. You think you don't deserve it. You think you're a fraud and you think that people will not believe you or they'll find you out. For me, it wasn't that people will find me out that I don't deserve this. For me, it was like, who am I to do this? Why would people want to listen to me? Why would people want to accept what I say? You know, I keep thinking I don't belong where I am. I keep thinking that my contributions are worthless and what I'm doing is worthless or what I have to say is not important to other people. But that's not true. That's one of the ways that you identify imposter syndrome. And that's one of the ways you cope with it. To really think if what you think is 100% true or not. It really isn't. You know, what I do is important. I do have the qualifications to do what I'm doing. I do have the experience to do what I'm doing. And I do a good job at it. It doesn't mean that you need to be appreciated all the time. It doesn't mean that people need to acknowledge you all the time. It only means that you need to understand it yourself. And I had to really learn to hush my inner critic, which is the worst thing, by the way. 
your inner critic self is always the worst as when you give a feedback to someone else. And I think I'm a little bit too harsh on myself and it has always been the case. It's like, whatever I do is never enough. You know, is that good enough? Have I done enough? You know, have I given my best? It's like, when are you ever enough? You know, that sort of a thing. And because I've been struggling through this, I've been doing a lot of reading, a lot of prayers into it. And, you know, kind of trying to find my way out of it because obviously I don't want this to cloud my entire work life or my entire personal life and personality. I don't want it to change my personality in any way, you know. Because I had these thoughts at the back of my mind, I recognized it when one of the leaders spoke about it in our smaller breakout sessions. It ended up, it was just the three of us, okay? And it ended up like a counseling session between the three of us. And it led on to such um, bigger discussions, such deeper discussions. I ended up talking about my book and I ended up talking about a lot of things. And then in the end, there were multiple breakout sessions and we spoke about so many other things. In the end, I did an exercise with them. You know, I don't know if you believe this or not, but it's true though. You are what you think you are and you are what you say you are. Try this exercise yourself and you will see the difference. All you need to do is you should be able to sit up and stand up. Okay. And you should be in a quiet place, preferably where you can think uh, or you can hear yourself think and you can say things out loud. Be sat comfortably somewhere and you need to say out loud, I am tired and exhausted 10 times and mean what you say. Say that for 10 times and then stand up from your seat, sit down. Give it a couple of seconds or, you know, half a minute or something. And then you say, I am strong and powerful. Say that 10 times loud and clear. And then you stand up and you sit down. If you observe your body language, you will know that when you say I'm weak and tired, you wake up with a bit of heaviness in yourself. You stand up with a bit of heaviness. You probably sigh. You, your body language will say that. But when you say, I am strong and powerful, you will be a lot more confident. When you stand up, you stand up really briskly. You stand up confident, your head held up. We did this exercise yesterday, just the three of us. And it made so much of a difference. And they did, they agreed that it made a difference to how they felt and how they thought about themselves and, you know, physically. And they were like, it's true. It, it's not just for work. It's for personal too, you know. Um, and I think it's going to be a great team building exercise for everyone. Whether you do it with your team, you do it personally or whatever it is. But you are what you think you are. You are what you say you are. So you need to watch your words, you know. Control your tongue. Watch what you talk to yourself. Watch how you talk about yourself. And that's all so important. These are one of the things that I'm learning. I am very careful about how I talk to other people how I express things to other people, but I don't do the same to myself. Why? Is it because I love myself less? Why am I extra critical of myself? You know, I wouldn't do that to anyone else, not even to Lakshmi, not to Levi, of course, not to my work colleagues, not to my family, not to my friends. So why am I okay doing that to myself? And that's one of the things that imposter syndrome does. It keeps telling you that you don't deserve what you have, or it keeps telling you that you're a fraud. People are going to find you out. How did you get to where you are? Because you don't have the experience or you don't have the qualification. You don't necessarily need to have something on paper to say that you will be able to do it. Um, as long as you have the experience, as long as you're honest and truthful in what you're doing, then that's fine. But long story, I'm not going to say long story short. It is already a long story. But the bottom line was that people were so happy. People meaning the two people in my group were so happy with the kind of discussion that we had. And I was so happy with the kind of discussion we had. I was like, I was very pleased with myself that I was able to open up and talk. We had that space. We had that exposure to be able to do that. And I had a willingness to do it. So, and then when we met for dinner at night after work, all of us had like um, a night out, you know, that the company arranged. So when we met for dinner, uh, we were just chatting with people. I think I was exhausted by the end of the day. My social uh, quota for the day was already running really low. But then people came to talk to me and I realized that this exercise spread like wildfire. People were talking about it and they were like, this is really helpful. This is really good. It really is. I didn't even realize it's such a basic, simple thing, but it makes a whole world of a difference. I don't want to stay here, no. Ain't going to keep it low. Now, if you want to go, let's go. Let's wrap it up and hit the road. I just got an awesome vibe. Understand that we get one 
I took an earlier train, we went in to walk in the morning, had a little bit of cash and really it was just a debrief from yesterday and catch up with your own team and everything and then I later was like, you know what, you can just leave early, you don't have to wait because you have the farthest to go, you have the longest to travel so you can leave. Instead of taking the 12.45 train, I managed to get the 10.45 train. I was hoping to go back home at 2.20 so we can pick me back early and then go. But it is now 3 o'clock and I am still sitting in the train. Um, <laughs> we got stuck somewhere along the way in Birmingham New Street because there was some problem with the line. And then we were there for about 45 minutes and then they had to divert our route. And then we are so close. I'm two stops away from reaching home. Literally the next one, two minutes away, is Cheltenham Spa and then is Bristol Parkway where I need to get off. But Apparently all the lines are closed because one part for swapping the part is not working. Looks like it's working now and I'm on my way but I still don't know what time I'm going to get back home. An hour and a half delayed but we finally made it back home. Now to go back to my boys. Can you see mommy? Face mommy. See why? Can you see mommy? Go. Bye. 